it's like an oven in here. And I've been cranking on them. Yeah, I'll give you, give you a, a quick sneak peek of what I got going on. All right, yeah, making progress. We'll talk about this tomorrow. I want to do this instead today. So we have a lot of younger viewers on this channel that are like really captivated by the, the technologies of the past, not just the cars, but the methods and the tools and, and, the, and the routines and whatnot that we used to do with these cars back in the day. And a lot of you guys have these cars today and it's like, you know, you're really getting the full picture of, of what it's really like, you know, is the tune-up just changing spark plugs and points and setting the timing or is there more to it? So I thought, let me, let me get into a couple of, couple of um, routine services that were done back in the day that no longer exist, like, like they've been completely wiped from history, but they were actually at one time um, part of the standard full tune-up. Because you had like two types of tune-ups. There was a, the half tune-up where you just gave it, you, you, you clean and gap the points, you, ch you change the plugs or you clean and gap them and you send the car down the, right, down the road, change a couple of filters, and then you had the full tune-up. The full tune-up is where you did the cap, the rotor, the wires, the uh, points, and you, know, you re replaced all of the filters, all of the fluids, you, know, you went through the car. And when you did those full, those full services, there were two routine steps that a mechanic would take um, that, that like, like I said, has been wiped from history, but they were so common back in the day. And they have to do with these two fluids, water and transmission fluid. But it has nothing to do with the cooling system, it has nothing to do with the transmission. Back in the day, oh wait, you know what, before I do that, I gotta give a shout out. So I just learned yesterday that we have a, a new neighbor here in, in town. So I just wanna give a shout out to uh, Whistle and Diesel, who evidently moved in just a couple of miles down the road. And uh, you know, he's, he's into the whole truck thing. So just, uh, just. Welcome to the neighborhood, bro. All right. So, the water and the transmission fluid. Back in the days of carburetors, and this is important before catalytic converters, right? Because things changed with catalytic. You couldn't do these things anymore once catalytic converters came into the picture. But back in the days of carburetors, cars that were used for short trips, like the kind of, you know, the mom would keep the car around the house, drop the kids off at school, car would never warm up, run to the store real quick, car would never warm up. All these little short trips, little shopping trips where the car would never warm up, they would load up with carbon, right? Because the choke never had a chance to fully open. The motor had never had a chance to really warm up and it, it, the, the choke would never open. It was always running rich. So carbon would build up inside the engine. So one of the common things you would do if you're doing a full tune-up and especially like on a city car, is you would do a decarbonate. They actually, at one point, they had a device that was like a, like an IV drip that you would hang and it had a solution in it and you would hook it up to the car's, one of the car's vacuum ports and let the car run and idle and this stuff would drip in and it would decarbon the, you know, the inside of the engine. But that was, that was like, that was more for show. The way real mechanics did it was like this. You get the engine hot, like hot, hot, as hot as you could. You're running around the neighborhood a little bit, heat on it, get the internal temperatures really hot. clean the motor from the inside out. It would knock the carbon off the heads of the piston, off the combustion chambers, off the valves. And you would keep revving the thing, and if you went around back, a lot of times you would see big chunks of, I mean, flakes of carbon which would come flying out the back of it. And you repeat this a few times. It was, it was part of keeping an engine healthy. The other thing 
we would do. Gas in the old days, today's gas doesn't really do it, but in the old days, gas used to form varnish. Gas vapors, wherever gas vapors would gather, like, and especially in the intake tracks of the engine, would form varnish. And it would get very thick, almost like molasses. One of the things we used to do is to is lubricate the top end of the engine. We did it with transmission fluid. Now some people would use Marvel Mystery Oil. You see it says, if you read a Marvel Mystery Oil, it says top cylinder lubricant, right? One of the purposes that it's actually formulated for. Most guys would just use automatic transmission fluid. And you do the same thing with the ATF as you do with the water. You rev the motor and you trickle the ATF down there. And what happens is, as it, as it travels through the induction of the engine, to the intake manifold, the cylinder heads and everything, it acts as a solvent and it takes that varnish, that gum off. Many times you would have an, a customer bring you a car, your mechanic, and you'd have a steady mist where it would backfire rhythmically up through the carburetor. Like every time you give it gas, it would go pop, 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 pop. It was a stuck intake valve and that was that varnish. It was very, very common. So you do this to either repair that type of damage or as a preventative, main, you know, preventative measure. Gave the car a full tune up and full service. Like I said, it's forgotten maintenance routines from the distant past. Now, should you do this? Yeah. If you have an older car, right? And this is important no catalytic converter. If you got a catalytic converter, you will kill it doing either of these methods. But if you're dealing with an older car, no cats. These are, it's, it's fine to do it. Don't get carried away. No, you're not gonna hydraulic the engine. I see it in the comments already. You're gonna hydraulic the motor, pour in water in. Trickle the water in and give it gas, right? You're not gonna just dump it and trickle it and give it gas. Uh, keep it clean, keep it revved out, right? And the same thing with the ATF. You're not gonna hurt a thing, right? It's, this is, this is going back to the Model T this was done. So uh, yeah, that's it. Simple, basic maintenance on vintage iron, right? There you go. The only place on the internet you're going to see this. See you tomorrow.